So we, we also have, uh, uh, you know, on the panel, <coughs> Mr. Vikrant, who is from AU. So I also mentioned in my last uh, presentation that there's an entire ecosystem in the education system. There are parts of education schools and colleges, they're also enablers uh, like, like Vikrant's company. So Vikrant, uh, what's your thought on how private, you know, uh, partnerships, uh, schools partnerships with companies like us can, uh, you know, from the so, uh, good afternoon, firstly, and uh, thanks for having me on the panel. It's uh, actually very interesting to see that with uh, all the education fraternity and respected personalities, you're sharing the panel, which is actually an acceptance of the system opening to partners like us. My company is actually a payment gateway provider, and. Uh, I'm not going to talk about education to say so because all these people have talked about it and how they are improving in terms of a K-12 transformation. But transformation is just not about solving things internally, but also having associations and partnerships. <coughs> I'll throw some numbers, very interesting numbers to uh, all of you. There are roughly around 1.53 million K-12 education institutions in the country. We proudly say that uh, we provide online payment collection services. My company is number one in doing that and we work with somewhere north of 6,500 institutions. But is that it? The delta between 6.5k vis-a-vis a 1.5 million is huge. And I believe that's where all of us together needs to work closely because people who are there in the room are somewhere touching the education ecosystem whether it's at a macro environment or at a micro environment. So we have to solve this problem together. It's just not about we taking the plunge or few people here on the podium taking the plunge that all right, we'll apply. It's also about educating the parents, the students about Go Green facility, about the advantages that they get when they make the payments online. It's just not about payments online. We say we are investing a lot in technology. The government is helping us a lot. There have been articles which say is that girls and parents have been fainted standing in the queue in this heat in the month of May or June for applying for DU application forms. For what? A form which costs rupees 168 rupees or 178. The father is coming from say Jaipur and standing in the queue to submit a form in this 44, I, I saw somebody showing the temperature of 44 or something. I think there is a huge way for us to go. It's about creating awareness. It's about building an ecosystem which is going to help not only to parents, to students, but also educate the students that they should be encouraged. And they are the youth, they are the future of the country. So all of us have to contribute to them. It's not when we used to stand in the queues, you know, Missing our lunch breaks, which we used to hate parents. You know, to submit your fees. Days are gone. I think we all have to work together to build this ecosystem together. So, uh, I think ending on that note, I believe we do work with uh, EPS has been pretty uh, interesting and supportive in having us as an online partner. And there are many more institutions. So. Uh, I already see the red thing blinking here. So I think we are open for questions or any other last comments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so to add to that, Pran, uh, <coughs> yeah, so enablers like private, you know, private companies like us, you know, we can help weed out the inefficiencies, right? So we, we are not academicians, right? But we want, we want to free your hands to take up academic functions, right? So you don't have to worry about your your admission procedures, your admission forms, and your payment gateways, and your, your fee collections, and your attendance regularization, and your records. There are people who can do that for you. So that's your that's your back end, right? That's all these activities, not academic activities, are your back office, right? But but there's somebody's front office. That's somebody's main business. So they, they might not be. This is not your main business. Your main business is to impart education. Your main business is not to. Uh, run air conditioning inside school, but that is somebody's main business, and he'll do it better than you can do it, faster than you can do it, and cheaper than you can do it. That's the basic principle of outsourcing, 
right? So that's where partnerships can help. I'd like to touch on one important subject, which I'd like any any of the panelists can respond to that question is on talent acquisition and retention, which I think is the most critical aspect if we want to transform our landscape. Uh, I I feel very strongly about the teacher, the whole teacher thing. Yeah, the teacher not coming, teacher coming, but not teaching, teacher teaching, but not is not uh, is not uh, competent enough to teach. Right. So how do we address this? How do we improve the quality of teachers? How do we attract quality, uh, you know, people to the profession of teaching, and how do we retain them? <coughs> Anybody can answer. This is something which has exercised us tremendously at, at the Doon School. Um, we've obviously looked at um, pay scales. Once upon a time, uh, well, people work either for love or money, don't they? And since teachers are no longer loved in the way they were, we have to pay them money um, to, 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 to do the job. Um, we're also, of course, uh, competing now with um, a massive uh, private sector as well as the public sector, which we've always uh, competed with. Um, when I say that, I'm talking about corporates, finance houses, banks. So bright young things tend not to go into education. So we have to offer them the incentive. One of the things we're doing is uh, we have a, a, a very uh, deep um, teacher training program Talking about partnerships, we linked up with the Institute of Education in London, which has just happened this year to be ranked the top education uh, school in the world. Um, and they're working with us at the Doon School on a bespoke uh, program for us. Um, it's very intense, and the teachers are finding it very challenging, but, but it's bringing about a, a, a revolution in learning and teaching. And I think where, where I take issue, and I know what people are saying, when they say that the younger generation um, are smarter than us. Actually, they're not. They're, 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 the, they're the same same as us. But I think what has happened in the profession is it's become so busy that teachers have neglected their own professional development. And a workshop here and a seminar there and a couple of days here and there cannot bring them up to speed. So this is a two-year immersion program, huge amount of critical reading, uh, essay writing, uh, dissertations, and so on, on the part of the teachers. And we've flipped it around. We're now talking about learning and teaching because the teachers have to learn and our professional development program feeds into our appraisal system. So the big question on your performance management pay form is what have you done for your own personal and professional development over the past year? But the investment in the teachers is very much appreciated. So money plus professional development goes a long way. Thank you. A very important point, and that's extremely important because it gives the teacher a great sense of satisfaction and fulfillment when you have a very robust professional development program. And we strongly feel that schools should be a safe place for teachers. Uh, the emotional quotient of the teacher is a lot of times neglected. You know that uh, today's teacher is under a lot of stress. You know, I believe, and I strongly believe that though uh, Mr. Pulgarni, a lot of teachers may have come into this profession, not by choice, but a lot of them, once they come into this profession, once they become teachers, it becomes a passion. Uh, uh, it does become, and if it doesn't become a passion, they will leave, you know. But unfortunately, our schools are, uh, are not really providing, and I'm talking in general, government schools, aided schools, a lot of private schools also, the schools have to be safe places for our teachers, where they are protected, where they are taken care of, and that's when the teacher will have the confidence to do what she or he believes in. Thank you. I corroborate what my friend said, but I would like to add, because I am in the DPS system last 37 years at Arkipuru. Why we are there for such a long time? There, there are reasons because DPS society is not, individual is not the owner of that society. And according to my knowledge, information, nobody is getting due or undue advantage from the school. And we have been looked after nicely. I can cite the example of our principals, of course schools, core and satellite schools. Well, they, they are calling it satellite school. So in our school, core schools, the society or the management has given powers to the principal. Principal is not only the principal, he or she is a manager also. So the power should be given to the principal in other schools also. 
but in government school, they are more qualified, they want to do better than us. Because in government, government money is involved and they are accountable to directly the government people plus the parent also, we are also. So it is the duty of the management to look after the interest of the teachers and inculcate the right values in the students, culture and they should be nurtured and cultured and there shall be synchronization of energy and synergy of the student, parent and the teacher and finally the management so that we can maintain the quality in the school, so that we can give the best thing that they want. Thank you. Mr. Kulkarni, one last question though, before we throw it open. So I said I had a follow-up question. 99.6%, what is going on? 99.6% in class 12th. Somebody scored, right, this year? What is going on? Your thoughts on that? Where does it all end? I have told you it is because of this industrial age thing. You are starting from the far end and seeing what you want the student to be. The idea is to get into DU. So how does DU select the guy? The only fair system DU has is to say, show us your marks so that you don't accuse us of bias in admissions. So you show us the marks. So there is bound to be inflation in any system, in any system, which says that it is competitive. There will be inflation. The inflation is not in the quality of the output of the students. The inflation is in the assessment system. Please understand the difference. So as long as we are saying we are, we are focused at the wrong end, but since getting in, into something like DU is so important, so the aptitude and talent of the child is irrelevant. Let's say a child wants to become a professional dancer like Shyamal Tower, he can get 70%. It's irrelevant. Let them pursue his dream. So we are looking at the wrong end of the stick and on this question of teacher retention and all that, uh, I fully agree with the principle that they say the teacher must be completely emotionally secure and I am glad we have a system like that in my school from, for long. But at the same time, as I spoke about the Eastman Kodak company, if that teacher does not unlearn and relearn, then he, become, he or she becomes a liability. So for the sake of the emotional security of the teacher, I don't think we can put this, hold the school to ransom. So the teachers also have a role to play, that they should be willing to unlearn and relearn. If they don't, then there must be a system of hire and fire. And therefore, a very professional appraisal system is required, so that the better performers are better rewarded. I agree, it's not just for love, it's money also. So in the corporate world, don't you get a better salary if you're doing better? Don't you get a jump? And at the same time, you may not leave a thing. In, in a, another seminar recently, I gave this example. Take TCS as a company. The CEO, Mr. Chandrasekharan, Chandrasekharan joined us as a management trainee. He's still there after 28 years. Nobody gave him a 28-year contract when he joined. But year after year, he's delivered. Year after year, he's happy working in this company. The company is happy to retain him. So it's a win-win situation. But I think the real test of some of the good schools, and uh, I won't say good, but say slightly elitist schools that all of us represent here, is that are we a cradle for future principles? Because the number of schools and well-funded schools which are opening up all over the country need good principles. The head of the institution is very important. So are these schools becoming the cradles of providing those principles? If they are, and if in the process I have attrition and my teachers leave and go and become principals, I don't think I'll shed a tear at all. I'll get young teachers, groom them, bring them up to the point where they can go to other schools. I don't see them. Every time retention is not, should not just be the focus. So we must see a little wider perspective than what has been said so far. Right. Thank you so much.